Good morning guys, welcome to Sevilla. This is the currently largest city in Andalusia and it is also the capital of this region in the south of Spain. Sevilla was Europe's gateway to the new world in the 16th century. From here the explorers Christopher Columbus, but also Ferdinand Magellan and Américo Vespucci all started from Sevilla to go and discover the Americas. The trade with the New World started and ended with the Torre del Oro or Golden Tower behind me. The ships came from the ocean onto the Guadalquivir river that you can see behind me. Right in the back there is the Triana bridge and this bridge leads you to a beautiful part of the city that we will also go and explore. If you follow this river upstream you will arrive in our next destination which is Cordoba. I am accompanied by my best friend Zara. Yes, Zara and Sara. This is gonna be very confusing for many people we meet. <laughs> we are staying at Hostel One Cathedral, which is located in the beautiful Santa Cruz neighborhood. The hostel had a fully equipped kitchen, comfortable dorm beds and plenty of bathrooms, even one for only the women. And there was a rooftop terrace where you could chill out. The hostel is located in the Santa Cruz neighborhood and this is the old Jewish quarter. And it is known for being very picturesque. The houses are very cute and beautiful. We've just arrived back in Sevilla for our last night and we got an upgrade. We got a discount just for saying that we wanted to stay again, that we were here before and obviously they remembered us. And now we are in a full female dorm with four beds instead of the mixed dorm with eight beds. All right, our first stop is by far the most important site to see when you are in Sevilla. It is the cathedral and this is the third largest church in the whole world. So I'm excited to have a look inside um, and we'll see if it's really that impressive. Inside here you can find the tomb of Christopher Columbus. Marveling at the interior of the cathedral, it was time to climb the bell tower. From here we had a 360 degrees view over Sevilla and the cathedral itself. We then went back down the slopes, not stairs, and the remnants of the former mosque were still very visible throughout the structure. After the effort of the climb, it was time to choose one of the cozy restaurants for our first Spanish meal. At Bar Pelayo, we had some sizzling shrimp and croquetas with iberico ham and oxtail. Of course, we washed it down with some sangria. Right now, our second visit of the day is the Real Alcazar of Sevilla. This is a Renaissance palace that was built after the Reconquista. So this palace was built after the city was taken back from the Muslims. Uh, and you can see a lot of Muslim decorations inside of the palace but it is not a Muslim building at all because they also use images of people and animals which was forbidden for the Muslims because only God could shape the living things. So we are now going to visit the palace itself and also the beautiful gardens which are famous for um, the bitter orange trees. And it is said that the oldest bitter orange tree is here in the garden. The reason why they've planted orange trees here is because they never lose their leaves. So they stay green and they are very good for the shade. Many of the sites we visited in Spain had free online audio guides, which was nice. This palace was a bit of a maze for us with no evident route to follow. We loved the decorations and courtyards with the water elements that were definitely inspired by the Alhambra, which we would visit later on. The gardens of the palace were very picturesque as well, although I would recommend to visit them early in the morning to avoid the direct sunlight and the heat. We 
we spotted lots of different birds and ended with a peek into the baths. Aside from the Alcazar, you can also visit a few villas that are similar to the palace. One of them is Casa de Pilatos, which has one of the largest azulejo collections in the world. And azulejos are the tiles that are painted and I'm absolutely in love with all of these beautiful tiles all throughout the city. The other one is Palazzo de las Dueñas and this one is closer to Las Setas. Okay, so we have just gone up Las Setas or the mushrooms here in Sevilla. Um, we took the last slot for sunset and we arrived a bit late, which meant that um, we arrived at 20 to 9 and the sun would set at around 9 uh, p.m. And it meant that we missed our slot for the interactive experience and we got to watch the sunset first and then afterwards we got to go into the immersive experience and afterwards once we left the immersive experience uh, we then saw Las Setas with all the lights and usually you have to pay more for that so we kind of had the best of all options. euros mm -mm. we don't think so but anyways we've done it it is more beautiful I think with the lights on yeah the sunset isn't that special at all um, but yeah up to you if you think it's worth it we are now on our way to meet the people of the hostel in a bar it's super nice they organize an event every single day we met the group near the golden tower and after one drink we moved to the bar we were the only ones there, it was so tiny, but the group was great and things escalated quickly. We ended up at the club called Coco. Good morning guys, or should I say good afternoon. <laughs> it's actually noon. Um... <laughs> Is it a good morning though? <laughs> <laughs> we had a bit of a slow start after the night that we've had, but it was so much fun. Um, and now we are off to see what's left of the city of sights to see. We've just had lunch, some delicious patatas bravas and also some jamón ibérico. And now we are going to make our first stop of the day at the General Archive. The General Archive is free to visit. It wasn't open yesterday on Monday, but it is today. So we're going to have a look inside. The Archivo General de Indias is housed in the ancient Merchants Exchange and is a collection of extremely valuable documents illustrating the colonial history of the Spanish Empire. After visiting the General Archive of the Indies, we will see the most luxurious hotel of the city. That's the Hotel Alfonso VIII. Another hotel that's interesting is the EME. And that one is located here uh, near the cathedral and it has a rooftop terrace that looks out on the cathedral. So that might be nice for a sunset drink. We will also pass by the University of Sevilla and this is a public building so you can just enter as you like. Um, but it is summer holidays, so it could be closed currently. It is actually an old tobacco factory, so I'm curious to see if there's anything left of that. I honestly loved walking through the University of Sevilla. It felt like I was starting my semester abroad all over again. We then made our way passing the Palacio de San Telmo to the famous Plaza de España. We've made it to the beautiful Plaza de España and if you've seen any pictures of Sevilla at all, then chances are it was a picture of this beautiful square and you can even go on a boat tour here. I could have walked around here all day or just sit here reading a book or journaling. I just couldn't get enough of the infinite photo opportunities and the different angles showing different amazing details.
I would recommend coming here in the morning when it's nice and quiet or around sunset when the square comes to life and the golden hour makes the colors pop. We have made it to Parque Maria Luisa, which is right next to the Plaza de España. And it's such a beautiful park, perfect for a stroll, a picnic, or maybe even a siesta. The Plaza América, at the southern edge of the park, is where two museums are located. The Archaeological Museum and the Museum of Popular Arts and Traditions. Aside from that, it's the perfect place to relax or go for a run. <laughs> then made our way to the Triana district across the river, where you can find the Triana market, which is a covered market filled with regional products. We have just had a delicious lunch at Barbaratillo. This was a recommendation by a friend of Zara's and we had such amazing local food. Some tapa, but I also tried the pig's cheeks that are also from the Iberico pigs. So the pigs that just roam around freely in the forests um, and they are the same pigs that they take the ham off. Um, and also I tried the bull tail oxtail yeah oxtail <laughs> i also tried the oxtail um, and it was nice although i do prefer the pig's cheeks to the oxtail my assistant says that i said lunch <laughs> but i think it's clear i meant dinner <laughs> Next, we met a group of the hostel at La Carboneria, where you can watch a free flamenco show every night. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to film it. We just got back from a free flamenco show at La Carboneria, and it was a guy dancing and at first they started out just with guitar playing, then the hands and the feet joined in, and then this guy started dancing um, and it was amazing. The guy looks exactly like what you would think of of a guy dancing flamenco. Just a tall, slender Spanish guy with long hair in a bun. Um, yeah, it was really nice, really nice experience. And they do this for free every night. After a last brunch, it is time to hop on a bus to the next destination or to take the airport shuttle bus, which costs 4 euros one way. If you're wondering when's the best time to visit Sevilla, then it is definitely in spring. First of all, the week leading up to Easter, Semana Santa, is celebrated here more than anywhere in the world. It is the place to be to spend this week here. During this week, a lot of parades go through the streets and they are carrying floats, a lot like in Ayacucho, Peru, which is the second biggest place to celebrate this. And I've lived there, so I was able to experience this during my very last week in Peru. And it was honestly so magical so i can't imagine what it's like here in sevilla the biggest floats of them all leaves from basilica de la macarena and no less than 48 men carry the thing around and they carry this really heavy float for about 14 hours so some people would say it's an honor to carry it but i think it's very hard to actually do it then another event that happens two weeks later is the Spring Festival. The Spring Fair is basically a huge street party that lasts about a week and it is a big flamenco party so the women are dressed in flamenco dresses and horses are being shown off and it's a really big deal. So I think it would be best to plan your trip during the springtime. Coming during spring you also avoid the heat of the summer. And just imagine the smell of the orange blossoms. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see the rest of our Andalusia series. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!